how do we, barring webinars such as this, how do we get these kids the education that they want? How do we make sure that the conversations surrounding gender are injected into the medical curriculum? Could you tell us a bit about that? Well, that you, you're throwing me a softball there, aren't you? So, <laughs> now the, <laughs> these are very important questions you're asking, Pam. And I think that we need multi-pronged approaches to education around these issues. I actually think the sooner we can start, if we can start in, you know, primary schools when people are, you know, just wee ones growing up uh, and with their parents, uh, as well as in middle schools, high schools, um, and then definitely uh, in the college and, and graduate programs. We, we do need, uh, the webinars are very useful. I think having in-person trainings can be very helpful. Uh, sometimes when I do trainings, I will do exercises to give people a little bit of a flavor of the experience of uh, what it's like to go to try to fill out forms and there's not a blank on the form that fits your gender identity, for example, or the experience of like yesterday. So my, my sister has a cardiac condition. And so my doctor referred me to get a cardiac CT scan. And so I'm going to get the CT scan. And as the technician is going to put uh, the nodes on my chest to measure me as I go through the, the monitor and the machine. She looks at my scars and she says, oh, what happened here? And I just said, well, I had surgery. And she said, oh, that must have been pretty big. Was it a car accident or what? And I'm like, do I feel like making this an educational moment? I was really wanting to focus on my own health care. Um, but I told her and then, she, I mean, fortunately, she was supportive. But then it was like, no, no, you're, you're not transgender. I'm like, yes. Are you kidding me? And I'm like, no, I'm not kidding. I'm, my gender identity is not a joke to me. And um, it, it was a very bizarre experience. And so helping healthcare professionals have some understanding of this. Again, that's a benefit of having people who've been through these experiences to tell you it doesn't feel good and to uh, develop written curriculum as well as in you know, live programs, webinar programs, you know, hitting the organizations, the professional associations like AAP, which is fantastic that they're involved. And um, I, I love the structure that y'all have proposed about starting with centers of excellence and then moving out from there. Um, there's so much work to be done, and uh, I'm just thrilled that all of y'all are involved and excited about it. And again, as Dr. Shavani said, I'll finish with this, be aware that it is across all the areas of health, because it's not just people who are going to work with uh, people helping them transition or explore gender. Uh, people have heart conditions. People have... GI conditions, people have dermatological conditions or cancers, et cetera. And so people need help across all sorts of health in the emergency room and more. So we want y'all to be all sensitive to these issues and I appreciate your listening.